Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello and welcome back to the channel where today you join me with the stunning Ferrari Roma on a beautiful day here in Germany to take this for a drive on the German Autobahn and think a little more both about Ferrari's awesome lineup at the moment and the Roma itself, which I first drove a little over a year ago and did actually quite seriously consider buying. And I want to almost revert back to that a little bit. Now, this particular car is finished in blue Corsa with the silver wheels. It is a beautiful specification, similar in some ways to my upcoming SF90 Stradale. We'll have a quick look then here at the car before we get it started, get out on the roads and go see what this is like when you drive it on the de-restricted German Autobahn. The Roma is a very good looking car, particularly when the sun pops back out onto this example in a moment. But I want to take a quick minute to run through a couple of things before we go out to find out what it's like to drive with the foot down on the de-restricted German Autobahn. The Roma's design is very clean. It's elegant, something we don't see too much of these days. These smooth curves over the arches, a very uncluttered bodywork design around the front, a historic link back to Ferrari's Evolved with the shape of the nose cone, this low pointed shape you have to it. A design that actually when it was released many likened to some of the more recent Aston Martins like the DB11 and the Vantage, although to me it's more reminiscent of the Maserati Alfieri concept that we saw a few years prior to the Astons. There are many things that were introduced with this, for example on the interior the technology with the curved digital dash display, the new infotainment controls through the steering wheel and even the new key design which I also quite like myself with the prancing horse badge on the front, the leather finish on the back with the nameplate of the car below and they actually combine the two parts of this on collection day so i'll get to experience that with the sf90 before long a couple more things though about the design to look up close you can now order it with a contrast front grille if you prefer to have that let's say in black and leading more towards the headlights at the front we have a very italian slightly off center number plate and i think that's to do with this the adas radar the advanced driver assistance systems your adaptive cruise control radar not the biggest fan of the place of that but I guess it has to go somewhere and the design of this in terms of the bodywork was to look clean and beautiful not exactly necessarily to house that if we come through and check out the interior though we have of course very much a luxurious place to be this wraparound style for the cabin the touch controls as I mentioned on the steering wheel the curved dash display behind them we'll talk more about that shortly in this car we've got the single tone Nero interior but you can opt to have some beautiful dual tone configurations with pinstriping touches that run all the way around but we're talking a new segment for Ferrari in fact this was the first Ferrari model that ever launched originally without wearing the Scuderia shields they've always been an option from the beginning for the customers who wish to add those but it was presented without an elegant understated car something that doesn't stand out something that can be daily driven while still having up front the 3.9 litre twin turbocharged v8 making 620 horsepower no shortage there at all around at the back I also very much like this design the way the tail lights integrate into this wraparound curve that runs completely around the width of the back. You've got the active spoiler here that raises. There's no button to do that manually. It lifts depending on the different speeds and the settings. And then down at the bottom, we've got our quad tailpipes, two on each side on the carbon fiber diffuser. If we come and take a step inside though, ready to go and rock and roll and take this for a drive, we can pop the key just in the middle. We can then wake the car up with one press. And I have to say, this has significantly improved since the first car I drove. In terms of its response, its liveliness, and the screen not having any lag, which is what they promised back at the time. So that's a big improvement and step up. Anyway, I think we should go straight out and go see what this is like to take for a drive. As we head here then to the Autobahn, an opportunity to experience this in a slightly different capacity to the previous time that I drove it. I am of course a big fan of Ferrari GTs and I make no secret of that. I enjoyed my FF a lot, I did many miles with that. I enjoyed the GTC4 Lusso that I owned at the time I drove this for the first time last year. And I'm very keen on one day returning a Ferrari V12 to the garage, potentially an 812 Superfast or an 812 GTS to go alongside the SF90 Stradale. So this ticks so many boxes in one car. And I want to talk more about that today. As we're driving now, I'm in comfort mode. You can turn the Manatino down to wet or go up to sport or race. And we'll go through those in a moment. But in automatic, it does everything 
super cleanly. It's very, very nice to drive. It's a great place to be. You've got all of this tech in front of you. There's a lot of info on the display in front. It maybe takes a little bit of time to get used to quite how many different screens you've got. And then this new style steering wheel as well, where you touch on the D-pad and that wakes it up. And like getting used to the indicators and the lights and wiper controls being on the steering wheel, this new control or interface style takes some getting used to as well. But when you have got the hang of it, it feels actually quite natural. So on paper, this is a car that would be right up my street. I must confess, the Schmiemobile's garage has quite a few V8s in it, which is actually a slight deterrent, if I could say that in, in some ways. But as we're heading now out to the Autobahn, I'm gonna pop it up for the time being into sport. Use the lovely H-pad controller you have in the middle to pop it into manual there. Start to drop down some gears, because up to this point, you don't really hear very much sound out of it. There is a little bit of clicking from the paddles. In some ways I like it, in some ways I'm not entirely sure. And then you get a little bit more of that as the car starts to come more to life, more character from it. And it's a very characterful soundtrack, it has to be said. The noises that you get out of this and the pops on the shifts as well. Obviously you'll hear more of this as we can get it up towards the red line when we find a more open stretch. Sitting in the car, the view out the rear window is not the best. Because of how raked it is, to make it look so good from the outside, means that it cuts off anything above the bonnet of the car behind you, in my seating position at least, which is a slight oddity. But then for parking or things like that, we do have the surround cameras on here also, which is quite nice. Just makes everything on that side, that touch easier. But this is driving in sports. If you go up into race one notch further, the shifts get even more aggressive. And this is what I really like about it. This car completely has two very, very different characters. When you're driving it in race, as opposed to comfort and wet, where everything is really very laid back and quite relaxed and quite soft and you know a very different style of driving, which is what they've really been going for with this. The idea of the Roma was to introduce the brand to new customers. As Ferrari expand their lineup as the company grows and so does the production number that they produce every single year. Now I think around 10,000, just a little bit over in terms of car numbers and the range itself is growing also with different models, with hybrid models, with still retaining some naturally aspirated V12s in the lineup as well. And who knows what the future is going to have in store also. So it's very quick. I mean, just a small acceleration out of a, a slip road. And this car, as we're into third gear in the restricted autobahn, in race mode, it has obviously quite an engineered in kick on the gearbox, but this new eight speed box is really very, very impressive depending obviously how you'd like to drive it. it. It offers and I think satisfies all the different demands and, and really driving styles that you could possibly want from it. And I'm hoping we will get some empty stretches to, to be able to enjoy and drop down some gears. It shifts so quickly and foot down. I love the illumination of the LEDs on the steering wheel, the carbon fiber LED driver's zone. It's very easy to think that as the entry-level Ferrari alongside the Portofino M, that it might be a bit of a less fancy, less special car, but it really isn't as we go under a bridge with some horses going over it. Only a few horsepower versus hundreds of horsepower. And it sounds good, you know. It sounds really, really good. This is what I really enjoyed about the car the first time I drove it, is that it is a really, really cool all-round package. So you might be screaming before we get to see what it can actually do, why haven't I bought one yet? And I think the answer to that is probably because it's so good as a car to almost daily and use all the time for all sorts of different things that it doesn't fit into my collection. The V12 is more for me the occasional use type Ferrari Super GT, which I would just find that extra little spark of enjoyment from with that V12 engine. And I'm all about the engine sound and the feel. And while this is obviously a really, really well made, multiple award winning engine, it's not a V12, which is obviously something I yearn after and, and would love to return, but actually as we go back into a speed limit section, drop it back down, go back into auto, nice and easily does it, and you get all of these great graphics and things happening on the display in front. 
and it's just like that nice and simple nice and easy chill and, and take it easy for a minute we've had a lot of roadworks and although we're now going past the restricted signs i suspect with this amount of traffic on the road it's going to be a uh, a uh, more gentle drive, we could say. Nonetheless, I'm going to pop it up into race just because I enjoy the sound and feel of the car. I enjoy the fact that it just gives you this kind of response and liveliness. So different to taking it easy as we were just for the last 20 minutes or so driving through a roadwork section to then wake up, to come to life, and to put the foot down. That's 200 kilometers an hour just out of nothing. engine do some of the talking it's the mid-range sound though and that's one of the things that so many modern cars actually lose is enjoyment unless you're driving them on the limit this has quite a lot of feel to it when you're in the middle of the rev range you don't need to be at the red line just when you are at the red line it's obviously pretty cool and a lot of power 620 or so on paper these days is necessarily a number to scream and shout about that's one of the crazy things about this but in reality it feels like a lot when you're driving believe me i'm back in de-restricted drop down some gears 100 or so kilometers an hour 150 200 220 something kilometers per hour some solid brakes as well as you'd certainly hope ferrari still with carbon ceramics across the entire range this is, this is supercar territory, don't be fooled. This is not entry-level car, even if it's entry-level Ferrari. It's still a Ferrari. Empty road ahead. mountain pass or a racetrack at the moment but just going through some of the turns on the slip roads here obviously you feel that it's a softer car this is not a track focused machine which is what I so often find myself driving it's a car that is supposed to be dailyable and it's comfortable as a result and what I particularly like the most about it is that you have this mix of lively engine characteristics which make it fun but combined with something that is nice to just cruise in you don't have to get out of the car and feel like you've got a sore back or something like that which so many cars are chasing these days in the pursuit for lap times and for ultimate performance but this is just made to be a nice car and that's exactly what it is a very very nice car to drive we're now going to head back down the other way but with more roadworks and lots of cars around i suspect this is going to be a, a gentle cruise okay i take that back slightly any opportunity to put the foot down. It's really very, very fast. You do start to hear some more wind noise around the A-pillars at higher speeds, but of course this is an exclusive problem for driving in Germany, not exactly a global situation. But what it does really well is just ride along at this speed. That kind of effortless style I am enjoying driving this quite a lot, as you can tell. If you go up into eighth, that's basically your overdrive gear. Taking it easy, not much pat. A little bit when you put the foot down in eighth gear, but not exactly. All guns blazing. To be down in sixth gear for something like that. And then you get this V8 tone. 
once things open up a touch again. Fifth gear. It pulls very, very hard. Only in Germany do you have traffic moving out of the way at 250 when you're going even faster. <laughs> Exclusive problem to this country as well. Firm on the brakes from about 300 again. And good steady braking as well. Yeah, this is a cool, cool, cool car. It does everything very well. I think if I rewound back a couple of years and this was me four years ago maybe, before growing my own collection of cars and I was just maybe one supercar, one super sports car we could say, when I had the FF originally, this would be a car that I would be all over. And in fact, it's a car that probably I think I should even recommend and try and push my dad to buy. He should have his first Ferrari, currently driving Aston DB11. And for a lot of people thinking that way, what a great pairing it would be to have, let's say, new 296 GTB hybrid V6 mid-engine supercar and Roma as a two-car Ferrari garage, or even throw in the upcoming SUV as a three-car Ferrari garage in the future. They're ticking all the boxes, and that's what I think Ferrari are doing so well at the moment, is that everything they make in its segment is awesome. It's really, really hitting the nail on the head with everything. And this is before we've talked about the passenger display and the central infotainment and all of the other features that we have in here. At the moment, just enjoying the drive and the feel of it. Yeah, it's a very, very impressive thing. Up to this point, we've not talked about the technology inside the Roma, and it starts with the magnificent dashboard where you have this 16 inch curved display, where despite it being a digital screen, Ferrari have in some way stayed true to tradition by having the large rev counter in the center. Now on the steering wheel, when you wake it up by pressing on the D-pad there, if you have it always awake, you can catch some of the buttons unintentionally, and that's something I've experienced. For example, if you're out here, you can just drift over the recognition for the voice button and then it starts talking to you when you didn't mean it to. So it goes to sleep in the setting it's in at the moment. But if you press view max, now it is slightly laggy, but when it loads up the navigation screen, that is an awesome, very large map view. You can then go one more where you have the horizontal rev counter and down at the bottom, a little snippet of the map as well, or back to the main view, where by swiping this sideways, you can actually shuffle those three different sections. So the car data, the map, and then also the radio or media or whatever it might be that you have selected. And you can scroll those across. And then of course, from that view, you can go through a number of different things as well. And I like how much configuration you have, the degrees of configuration that you can go to. Obviously, if you change the Manatino position, that pops up and gives you a visual representation of it as well. Again, small little lag behind when you do it, but I do like how much has gone into this. And even if the font size is very small, you can see so much on that. It does take some getting used to with these various controls, particularly setting the mirrors where you have to press on the mirror you want and then move it by sliding your finger around, which takes a little bit of getting used to and can be slightly awkward at first. But when you've got the hang of it, that kind of works. One thing I like doing in this is turning off the stop and start because it's very, very aggressively quick in when it wants to shut off and it gets slightly irritating. I'm not gonna lie, but otherwise, I'm a big fan of this. I love the way it's done, the way these are illuminated, the way it's all presented, and this tablet that you have sitting in the center for your climate, your audio, your navigation. Uh, again, obviously a touch panel in this distinct separation between the driver and passenger zones, where over here the passenger has even more info through this screen, the performance data. If you're revving it or driving, that gives you live, obviously, feedback. And it's all just very, very nicely presented, including this. And this is reminiscent of the old gated manuals finished in the, the chrome look with reverse automatic manual on the middle selector and L for launch control over on the right, if that's what you're going for with the key tucked into its little storage compartment down here as well. Those are just really very nice and even some good armrest storage, obviously space in the back. It's a two plus as opposed to a two plus two, bit of a squeeze for a person back there, but could probably do it for a short journey if you so wish. And then to shut it off, press of the button and you actually get a bit of a display on the dashboard as well after it's all reverted. It tells you about my drive, 305. I hadn't even realized it was 305, <laughs> 189 miles per hour. All right then, well, 
turns out this thing's got some go and it just gives you a little display you know which manatino positions you've been using the most and clearly i've been on that drive between race and comfort <laughs> in the majority but there's so much that they really introduced with this car it makes it all feel very very special and if we just pull this and have a quick look at the engine you can't drive a ferrari and not take a quick look at the engine bay hey check out the uh, v8 up front grab the catch it's a very light bonnet and as always a work of art just the way that this is presented the chassis plaque at the front and the red traditional engine components marvelous absolutely marvelous and a very very nice car as i've said to go out and drive and quite the grand tour if we come around towards the back it's a decent amount of storage space back here for your luggage on the road long adventure got cameras and bags and stuff but quite a low access although quite narrow so you're not going to be fitting anything singularly large but combine that with the back seats which do fold by the way down here the rear partition actually folds down and you've got plenty of space complete with the personalization specifications plaque that you have at the back and i'm very much looking forward to seeing what that is like on my inbound sf90 and how many different things are going to be written on it so today with the roma has been quite the drive this has impressed as much as it did before automatically locks as i walk away from it didn't know it did that until just now but as i said earlier this is the thing this is a car that does everything very well if you want one very sporty verging on supercar cars daily drive to use as a grand tour to live with there's not much that could do more than this could and if i was going to be buying a car in this segment right now i think the roma has that absolutely dialed in it is a very 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 impressive machine for me though it's more an occasional thing and this is why i lust after the 812 so maybe <laughs> it's going to become time to bite the bullet and to get that done to re-add a ferrari v12 but i can certainly see more ferraris joining my collection in the future growing out the italian arm of the garage the ferrari marinello gar garage as we go from here anyway thank you very much for joining me today i've really enjoyed taking the roma out for a spin on the autobahn verging on 200 odd miles an hour with absolute ease that's it for now though thank you very much for watching as always guys and i'll see you again very soon cheers